Thank you, and you. Good, Corey, that's a good background. I like it. It looks like a small classroom or a library. <laughs> that's Thank a good you. one. You're welcome. Nice. Let's talk to Mary. Hello, Mary. How are you? I'm fine. I'm a bit, little bit sick because I'm just uh -huh. come home after a long travel. Oh, where did you go to, Mary? I just go to uh, been doing to like yeah. have like get to go there yeah. with my family travel uh -huh. go with my family uh -huh. there. Now, when you say sick, was it from the weather or from the car driving in the car? I was sick before I go travel, and after the travel home, and after travel home, yeah. I uh, have been sick more. Okay. Mary, you have a great speaking voice. Do you like debate class? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you have good emphasis and a strong voice, so I think that's why your presentations are always good. Very nice, Mary. Good, good, Thank good you. to hear it. You're welcome. I hope you feel better. Let's go to Nam Nguyen. Nam, are you there? Nam's real name yeah. he uses Ryan. Ryan, you are in Japan. Brendan is in Japan. Ryan, what city are you in? I'm in uh, Hyogo. Hyogo. Hyogo, okay. Hyogo or Kyogo? Hyogo. Kyogo. And H I Hyogo. Yeah, you're in Hyogo, Ken. So you're in Hyogo City where Kobe is, right? Ah, that's a great place. Hey, um, Ryan, you know, the weather for Japan is all day today is cloudy and rainy and tomorrow cloudy and rainy, too. Oh, and so the students who are in Ho Chi Minh City said it's 36 degrees. And this is shocking to me. That's like Taipei, Taiwan in summer. Right. Japan doesn't get like that until August. So that was really surprising to me. Ryan, always good presentations, by the way. You did good hand gestures. You are ready to debate and do presentations. So tell your mother and father you're doing a great job. Nice work. Okay, let's see. Is that Mr. Thomas there going back and forth in his chair? Thomas, how are you? Can you talk to us, Thomas? I'm great. Hey, Thomas, how's that little notebook of yours? Did you finally find the right page? <laughs> I was worried about you in that notebook because you lost your page and it was taking a long time last week. But actually, Thomas, I thought it was a little bit funny. It was cute. Nice work, Mr. Thomas. I think you're a boy genius, by the way. <laughs> Susu, you did a wonderful I job. A in your I yes, am, Thomas. One I more time. I am a genius. I am a genius. You strike me as very intelligent. <laughs> All right. And my sister. Bobby. Oh, your sister. Who's more intelligent, you or your sister? Probably my sister. Oh, that's nice of you to say, Thomas. What a good boy. You're also charming. <laughs> Probably my sister. <laughs> All right. Are you guys are going to have to do the genius challenge or something, right? <laughs> okay, Susu, can I show your video to everyone tonight? <laughs> okay, Thomas. okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because Susu, you did an amazing job on it. I'd really like to show that video. It's really wonderful work. Henry, how are you? I feel very tired because I yeah. just wake up in the long room. Oh, okay. Did you go to sleep late last night? Yes. But yeah. I was sleep very late because yeah. yesterday is my sister's birthday. Yeah. Hey, Henry, you know, some of my students um, can speak French because they have family members who live in Paris, France. Do you know how to say your name, Henry, in French? No, I didn't know. Here, I'll put it in chat and I'll make it to everybody, Henry. It's really funny. That's why I bring this in. So it's no H. It just says Henri. <laughs> so it's Henry, but they say Henri because French people don't say H. So maybe they spell it like this but the pronunciation is Henri, and it's kind of cool. I like how it sounds, Henri. There are all these famous French people named Henri. <laughs> okay. Hey, Harry, how are you? I'm fine, teacher. Harry, thanks for your nice presentations. I always enjoy your presentations because when you do your presentations, 
you really stop and think about the words that you're using. And it's like you're really thinking about the topic. So it's actually a really interesting debate presentation style. I like it. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Thank you for working hard on those, Harry. It's really good. Hey, Zen Zelda, did you change your name from Ashley? <laughs> no, I changed my name as Yuin. Okay, so now you're Zen Jen Zelda. Yes. It's pretty cool. I just did your presentation. It was very nice. I gave you good comments because I liked it. Some mm. of you students have this ability to think while you speak, and that's a really good debate style because it lets you change, you know, your focus. Mm. Kevin, also really interesting debate style. I mentioned you had rhythm in your speaking. You're developing this confident style of speaking where you're using a little rhythm. And I, in my comment to you, I said many famous lawyers and presentation people on television also have a little bit of rhythm to their bodies and to their speaking. So that's actually a good style, Kevin. I was impressed. Uh, nice. thank you. You're welcome. You're doing, you're getting better and better. Okay, Hachi, are you there? New Yen, I have to pronounce your name properly, New Yen, because I went to Google to see how to say that famous family name, New Yen, ha. All right. But if you want to correct my pronunciation, that's okay. Wait, I must change my name a bit. All right, change it a bit. I don't mind. But I, I do like that. I do like the ha chi because in Japanese and Chinese, chi means energy. So the idea is energy. Does it mean that in Vietnam, the chi, Susan? Not really. Oh, okay. Chi is just a strong name. Very no, cool. chi is like a part of something, I think. Ah, okay. But it does have meaning in the Vietnamese yes. language. Yeah. Susan, very good. Mr. Messi, are you there? Yes. Messi, I used the soccer player Messi in one of my presentations for the speech class. And the boys on Saturday morning went crazy. One boy kept shouting, Messi, Messi. He loves him so much. <laughs> so that was really funny. No, I don't, I don't. Uh, I'll I show don't you a picture like later. I play soccer. Yeah. I like play badminton. Oh, ah, okay. You just like that name, Messi, for your background or your name, Messi. Okay. I you know <laughs> my best friend. Messi, that name, that soccer player Messi is famous all over the world. Um, in Saudi Arabia, they love him. In Taiwan, all, all the boys in the world know who Messi is. It's kind of amazing, right? So it's a good name, Messi. <laughs> Milk, how are you? MLK, Milk, which is a famous American speaker. MLK, Martin Luther King. <laughs> hey, Milk, how are you? I'm great. Good. Milk, did you do a presentation for me <laughs> for last week? It's okay. You did a good one, I think, two or three weeks ago, and I really enjoyed it. Susan, you have a question, please? Or did your hand go up just as an accident? Um, I said that, like, last week I was absent, so oh, I okay. the chance to do your homework. Oh, don't worry. Um, I'll show you what we did two weeks ago, because a lot of the students are doing a speech presentation on um, should primary students do sports on sports teams to become stronger students and that kind of thing. All right, I'm just laughing at Thomas. What are you laughing at? What's so funny, Mr. Thomas? Um, <laughs> Thomas messy's moment. background is really messy. Oh, <laughs> Messi's background is really messy. Thomas, I love your school shirt. It has that classic Vietnamese People's Republic shirt. That shirt is so cool. I think if you if you sold that shirt in America, someone would pay really good money for it. <laughs> but you're you're small, so I don't know if you could sell a small shirt. But an adult shirt, you could get good money, like a hundred dollars. Thomas, all right. Bao, are you there? And Bao switched to an avatar. Hey, Bao avatar. <laughs> Tracy, hey, Tracy. Tracy, are you there? Let's do a mic check, Tracy. Tracy Bao, Bao Tracy. All right, let's go to Jenny. Hey, Jenny, how are you? Jenny, uh, who is your brother? Is your brother Harry or Henry? Sometimes... 
Yeah, because Jenny, you you and your brother do your presentations on the same place outside your house on the what's called the balcony, and it looks really cool. It looks like Florida, where my mother used to live 25 years ago. It brings back nice memories because I think Ho Chi Minh City has the same weather, the same climate as Florida, where my mom lived. Okay, thanks, Jenny. Tracy, how are you? Yes. Tracy, is that a classic Japanese manga with the big eyes? Mm -mm. That because is my... Avatar. Uh, okay, the avatar. Because, you know, the Japanese artists always make these really big eyes on children. And uh, mm -hmm. it makes the children like look really cute, but also very intelligent, I guess. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. We have, oh, we have our teacher's helper. Uh, Chao Ka, always a pleasure to see you. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Yeah, we'll have a good class today. We'll do a little bit of review, but I have a stress point that I want the students to try. Um, I'll bring that up in just a second. We'll watch um, Susu's presentation because she did a really good job and that's why I want to share it. Mm. Okay, you guys, let's share Susu's presentation. Now, why do I like Susu's presentation? Because she took the affirmative team's language and she used it like three times. So I'm gonna show you that here on Susu's thing. And do you remember the affirmative team? Um, we'll go to the blues. Mr. Thomas, would you like to read the affirmative team, like read four of these for us or five of them? No, please. No, all right, I'm gonna pass it to Mary. Mary, would you like to read the affirmative team? We have point one, two, three, four, five, all in blue. Yeah. Okay. Oh, our team firmly, firmly believes that school uniforms save parents money on clothes. Mm. First and foremost, let's clarify of our stance. We feel school uniforms create school pride. Mm. Allow us to present our case for requiring all students to wear school uniform. We are, uh, we are here today to advocate for students looking their best night in a uniform. Mm -hmm. in a nice uniform. It's our contention that school uniform makes all students equal. Let us begin by highlighting the key points of argument. School uniforms create school provide, make all students feel equal, and save parents money on clothes. Yeah, Mary, um, that school pride is when you feel your school is really good and um, you're happy to go there and the students feel really good about wearing their uniform. The word is proud, but when you use it with a verb, it's take pride. And so you take pride in something as you feel good about the work you do. Hey, Zelda, are you there? You were just had your hand up. And if you'd like to read, I'd really like it if you could read. Miss Zelda. Yes. All right, Zelda, can you read from We Propose? You can read the next four. Yes, we propose that even the private school should require students to wear uniforms. Our position is grounded in the fact that school uniforms are made by quality materials and last longer than casual clothes. And the uniform uh, are carefully designed. Uh, we aim to demonstrate uh, school that require uniform have higher success rates. We assert that school uniform uh, dis distinguish dis distinguish yeah. school from one to another and a healthy sense of competition results. This 
competition can increase a school's success. Thank you. Yeah, nice Thank sweet. Thanks for helping me with the uh, difficult words. Yeah. Do you know, Chenzel, if you see that word distinguish, in debate, you have to use the high level words, but that just means separate. It means it separates our schools from the other, and that separation is what makes us special. Then you change it to the word distinguish, right? Yes. Other words uh, like demonstrate. Jen Zelda, you know demonstrate, don't you? No. Okay. I'm, I don't really know. It's like during a presentation or a high level debate. It's another word that just means we're going to show you why. We're going to tell you why, right? Show you would be using like a presentation with um, a PowerPoint or Google Slides behind you that you point you know, to the background. To um, tell people is just to use your voice. So demonstrate is like both of those skills, show and tell, right? Can I go to May? Hello, May, how are you? You have your hand up? Good to see you, May. Hello, teacher. May, can I run some words by you? Do you understand that first one? It's always used in debate. First and foremost. Do you understand that one? <laughs> no. It's okay, May. What that means, first and foremost, means the very most important thing we are going to talk about is first and foremost. It's a little old fashioned, but it's used in presentation and debates and on television. First and foremost is like, this is a really important thing we're gonna talk about, all right? Um, oh, there's a big word. How about if we ask that boy, Mr. Thomas, H. Thomas, advocate, do you recognize this word? I've never heard of advocate. Okay, it means we believe in an idea, so we're going to give our support to the idea. We advocate means our team feels that school uniforms make a student look nice, but it can be anything, Thomas. It could see, we could say our team advocates for fresh vegetables in all the school lunches so students eat healthy food. So advocate, okay? Um, and then, oh, here's another one. Mr. Messi, are you there? Hello, Messi. Hey, Messi. Messi, do you know this word? Oh, Messi's microphone went out. Messi, are you there? This is a propose. Okay, yeah, propose. Do you know propose, you guys? No. Propose, now, this is a crazy word because when a man asks a woman or a woman asks a man to get married, they say, will you marry me? That's called a marriage proposal. This propose is a little bit different. This propose is to, we are going to present an idea to you is propose, propose an idea. All right. So I'm trying to get all of these um, ready for you. This one's tough too, grounded in the fact the students in class one today at, um, um, at 10 o'clock in the morning class, they said, teacher, um, is grounded like when your mother and father don't let you leave the house because your behavior is bad or you're getting bad grades? That's true, grounded can be that, but this grounded is building a strong foundation in anything like a house or education. Grounded means this is a strong foundation to begin. So Ryan, you live in um, Hyogo Ken, I live in Hiroshima. Hyogo has powerful earthquakes. So the houses in Hyogo have to have a strong foundation because when the earthquakes start shaking, so that's what a strong foundation is. And in your debate, you say, this is a strong foundation. Our facts are gonna be supported with strong details, you guys. So that's what that grounded means, okay? Any questions? And thank you to you guys. You guys are really good. You guys don't all shout at once. In class one, they're so young, they all shout the answers. And so I don't know if anyone really understands these words. Jen Zelda, question please. The background, you look like you fly into the air, so you ground it up there. I know because my mind is just out in space, Jen Zelda. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello, Ellis. Welcome, Ellis. How are you? It looks a bit funny when I saw it. You look I like know, flying in a 
you look like you're flying in the sky, then you talk to the students. <laughs> Very funny, Genzella. <laughs> okay, are you guys ready for the amazing Suzu in her presentation? When you listen to Zuzu's presentation, look at how many of these blue words that she used, right? So I'm going to get it ready here. And here we go. And uh, here we go. And I have to do this quickly because Zuzu's going to start talking. And here she is. I hope it works OK, because sometimes Zoom is strange. Hi, everyone. The negative two and judge. The debate topic today is, should primary students in Vietnam be encouraged to join school sports team? Our team firmly believes that primary students in Vietnam must be encouraged to join school sports team. First and foremost, let's clarify our stance. We agree that primary students in Vietnam be encouraged to join school sports team because doing a lot of sports is good for our health. When we play sports, we feel very healthy and happy. And we have lots of energy to do work. If you play sports daily, then you will soon be an athletic and strong person. Nice. Especially children. <laughs> so, students and teenagers must play sports every day for a better life. For all the results, primary students in the land must be encouraged to join school sports team. I agree. Nice, really Thank good. Thank you for your listening, <laughs> and bye-bye. Bye-bye, Suzu. Hey, wait, Suzu's in our class today. <laughs> Zenzella, wasn't it wonderful? Isn't that just a great presentation? <laughs> nice, Suzu, really wonderful. Um, Suzu, you really worked hard to remember all of those affirmative teams. I saw so many of those in your presentation. Let me just show you here uh, one more time. Uh, let's see. Zen Zelda, do you remember? Did she do Our Team Firmly Believes? Which ones did she use? You can answer this. Anna can answer this. Jenny can. Uh, Ellis, what ones did you hear her say? Uh, is Alpha, is Our Team Firmly Believes that? And first and foremost, let's clarify our stance. I just listened to that words. Mm -hmm, nice. Really good. So she used so many of those. And then she even recognized the negative team. She said, and hello to the negative team. Remember, those are like good debate manners. It means we don't hate the negative team, but we are going to challenge you with our words, right? And so she says, and to the judges and the negative team, um, Susu does a wonderful opening statement to show you we're going to fight with words today but we're not going to get angry at each other we're going to discuss this intelligently because that's what debate should be discussing um, intelligently but you guys you know politicians who are in countries like america and england they shout at each other in debate and that's not true debate style and so many people in england and america get a little bit angry with that debate style they said these people should talk to each other with better manners, but they get really angry about certain things and they shout at each other. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, can I ask, um, who else likes to read? Because now I want to switch to the negative team. The main focus, May, very good. I'm glad May volunteered. The, the main reason I want to switch to the negative reds is because in the speech homework that you did for me over the last two weeks, um, the students only chose the affirmative, and that's okay because you're just learning how to do these um, special language, focused language of the blue. It's okay if you didn't do the negative team because we're going to really review it and practice it again today, and you'll see how this works all during today's lesson, okay? So where is May? May, are you there? I'm here, I'm here. May, would you like to read the reds for us? Like uh, one, two, three, four, and then we'll find another student to read one, two, three, four. Okay. Okay, so you can do all of this. 
Thank you to the affirmative team for presenting their case. However, we must respectfully disagree. Our team feels that wearing school uniforms is unnecessary. While we appreciate the affirmative, the affirmative team's perspective, we believe there are significant flaws in the agreement. Allow us to offer a repertoire to the points raised by the aff affirmative team. First, we feel uniforms do not make students feel equal. The negative team disagrees with this view. Mm -hmm. And then we contend. We contend that a uniform isn't necessary to make a student look their best. Yeah, there's another of those words, May. We have contend is means we think, we strongly think, and we're going to present this idea to you that school uniform isn't necessary to make a student look their best. Really nice. Um, let's see, Ellis, are you there? Would you like to try Ellis, uh, Gia Lin? Yes. Um, Gia Lin, would you like to try the next four? It starts here and it goes down to here. So I'll try to put that all in the screen for you. Okay. And okay. actually it starts right there. Okay, here we go. This is Ellis. We, dis we disagree with the premise but put forth by the affirmative team. We assert school uniforms do not necessarily create school pride, make all students feel equal, or save parents money on clothes. Mm. Let's examine closely, closely the agreements by the affirmative team and address their shortcomings. For the idea I, that even private schools should make students wear uniforms is not accurate. accurate. Hmm. Contrary to what the affirmative team suggests, we maintain that school uniforms are not always made with the best materials and designs. It is our, our position that the affirmative team's Purposeful overlooks crucial yeah. fa factors such as school success rates are not determined by the appearance of neat looking students in nicely made uniforms. Yeah, so there's a lot of big words there. Crucial means really important. And so, what the negative team is saying in this last point here is. You know, you don't have to have a great looking uniform to be an excellent student and bring your school success and your family and your self success. You could wear casual clothes and still do a great job. And that's an interesting point. Um, let's see. Contrary means we have an idea that goes against that. And shortcomings is Anna there. Hello, Anna. How are you? <laughs> Anna, are you there? Hello, Anna. Hello, teacher. Anna, do you understand this word shortcomings? Shortcomings. I don't know. All right. Well, an example of shortcomings is you try your best to get like 95% on a test, but you get like 75%. So you are short of the 95%. So shortcomings means you tried your best, but you didn't quite make it, not real successful. So they, the negative team says, they have a good argument, but here are the shortcomings. Here's why it's not the best argument, right, you guys? So very good. Nice work on that one. Now, there are more words, but whenever I um, present to you guys some new language, some new words, I like to start real simple. So in the breakout room, we're going to get ready for some breakout rooms with the teacher's assistants. We have the affirmative team states. Now, what if the affirmative team made some sort of like crazy statements, you guys? And you guys are going to laugh at some of these because these, um, these statements are just so strange. I don't see how you guys could ever agree with them. Um, Harry, are you there? Harry in Hanoi. Yes, Hello. teacher. Hey, Harry, is that your brother next to you or are there two Harrys? What's that? You have double Harry. 
Oh, that's your brother? Is he your twin brother? No, I'm not, no. Oh, he's younger. Okay. Hey, Harry's twin brother. All right. No, I'm 12. I'm 12. Oh, okay. I thought you guys were twin brothers. You guys look a lot alike. Harry, would, would you like to read these crazy affirmative team things that I made today? Yes. Okay, here we go. Um, vegetables are their favorite food. Um, kids should eat as much candy as they like. School students should be allowed to play three hours of computer games a day while in school. School should start at 11 a.m. each day so students can sleep more. Um, students should start riding motorcycles to school from age eight to get to school faster. <laughs> each school should have its own zoo, even with some dangerous animals like tigers and lions for the students to play with. Students should never have to go to the doctor or dentist because it's scary. Summer vacation should be from May 1st until October 1st because it's too hot to go to school. So Harry, I see Ryan is laughing. Do you see, I tried my best to make these as crazy as I can. So if the affirmative team says we believe in these things, you could take something like school should start at 11 a.m. each day and you want to negate this. So you say, let's examine closely the argument by the affirmative team and address their shortcomings. First, the idea of students going to school at 11 a.m. simply won't work. It's not practical because the students will skip at least three hours of classes. And this means between 11 o'clock and four o'clock, they have to learn everything and there just won't be enough time. So do you see how I use this? Let's closely examine. You know, I didn't say, hey, that's a crazy idea, affirmative team. All right, Henry, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Henry, if someone gave you that argument, uh, let's see, kids should eat as much candy as they like. Can you take one of these red things and say, no, I disagree? So you could choose any of these. Thank you. While we allow negative, disagree, anything okay. you like. We disagree with the premise, but put forth by the affirmative team. Yeah. We assert. What about candy? Kids should eat as much candy. We assert eating as much candy as they want is. We assert eating the most candy is very like unhealthy so i think that the children would need to eat left of the uh, candy nice work henry that's exactly what i want you to do remember when we go into the breakout rooms you don't have to give a super long argument you just have to practice using these negative things like we disagree with the premise put forth by the affirmative team that children should is eat as much candy as they want we disagree because children should eat healthy things all the way into their teenage years, even their college years. They should try to eat fruit, vegetables, rice, fish, um, th milk, you know, things like that. Jen Zelda, impression, please. Maybe you should call me Jen for short. Okay, mm. Jen is good. Uh, I saw that mm, the words that even the school have its own school. The lions and tigers are too scary. That's a really deep, that's ridiculous word. It's absolutely ridiculous. So I want you to negate it. Which of these do you want to use? Mm -hmm. uh, I want to use, thank you to the affirmative for presenting the case. However, we must respectfully disagree. Our team feels that. Our team feels that the school oh, is unsuitable. Uh, Jen, you have to put the animals, the zoo in the school. Our team feels that having a zoo in a school is. Uh, having a zoo in the school is. Uh, in the school. Um, is. 
is dangerous animals like some tigers and lions for the students to play with. Yeah, so you want to be careful, Jen, if you say it's totally ridiculous. In a debate, the judges won't like that. They'll give you minus points because it's putting the other team down. It's saying like, that's the most foolish idea I've ever heard of. Of course, I made these foolish ideas, Jen, because I want you guys to learn to disagree in a debate style and sound like you have really good manners, right? Uh, Let's yeah. try one more. Uh, Let's try yeah. May may I may I talk a bit? Uh, I I bet the uh, in school. Just, I think that students should play cups. To, should play tiger, uh, baby tigers like cups. Yeah. The best. That's uh, true. I like I like cups, uh, baby tigers, all all kinds of baby animals. I love it. They're very cute. But I saw one time with a baby tiger. It still was able to scratch the man who was holding it, it scratched his shoulder. And it was, you know, a pretty strong scratch. There was a little bit of blood. So even baby tigers can really fight if they need to. Hey, Mr. Ryan, you were laughing so much. Would you like to choose one of these crazy ideas? Um, yes, but uh, can you uh, show me how to do it. I don't know how to really to do it like Jenny or yeah. Henry. Great question, Ryan. Very honest. I'm happy you give your question like that. So for example, um, students, school students should be allowed to play three hours of computer games each day while in school. Do you think that's a really strange thing? Yes. Okay. So you take that. That's part two here. Save this for just a minute. And then Ryan, we go up to there. Would you like to use this contrary? Can you read the red part here? Contrary yeah. to what the formative team suggests, we maintain. And then we go down here. We maintain that school students. School students should be allowed. Uh, sh and then I'm going to put this. I'm sorry, Ryan. Should not be allowed. There you go should not be allowed to play three hours of computer games a day while in school. Yeah, so do you see, Ryan, I put that not in there, right? And I made it really strong, not. So you did a great job, right? You said, contrary to what the affirmative team suggests, we maintain school students should not be allowed to play three computers of games a day in school. Maybe they should be allowed to play 20 minutes during lunch recess or break time in a special room, right? Something like that. All right, do you guys understand all of this? Um, if you see, I made a PDF of this, but I'm gonna copy all of this and put this in your chat. So you can just look in your chat when we're in the breakout rooms and then you can choose a um, negation style. So I have to stop the share here because sometimes chat doesn't work too good with that. And so I'm gonna go to everyone and if you look in your chat, I'm hoping, oh, it always says that, you guys. It said it's too long. Try again. You know, sometimes this Zoom is too strict, too strict. Ryan, you live in Japan. Do you know that word, kibishi? <laughs> yes. Yeah, sometimes Zoom is too kibishi. <laughs> it's too strict. It doesn't let me do certain things. All right, you guys, do you see I got my negations? I got the first part. I'm now going to do the second part here. And here we go. And I'm going to copy more. So you have about eight negations to choose from. Just choose one, you guys. You don't have to choose all of them. And then are you ready? I'm going to put the crazy topics in here, too. And the affirmative team says these first and then all you have to do is say, I don't agree, but you have to use the special language above. Okay. So let me check with our um, breakout room teachers, our helpers today. Uh, who do we have for today? And you can spend up to 15, 20 minutes on this. Um, Chao Ka, 20 minutes is okay on this. The students are doing a great job and these are really well-behaved, mature students. You guys are always so good. So I'm going to let you go a full 20 minutes on this because I don't have to worry about anything. You guys really focus on your studies real, really well. Okay, so we have Chao Ka, you'll have one breakout room. 
And um, let me see if there's another teacher's helper or one of the older students who is a designated helper. And um, with you guys, I don't even have to tell you, you know, don't chat during the thing, right? You guys have such good behavior. It's always a pleasure to teach you. Um, okay, so Chowka, there are only one teacher's helper. If you want to work with um, about 14 or 15 of the students, I can work with 14 or 15 of the students in the main room. And uh, we can go through this. If the students go off a little bit about the crazy ideas, that's okay because these are fun topics, you know. I don't expect them to be so serious. I can see you guys were laughing about students should uh, ride a motorcycle to school, right? I think that, that one Ryan thought was really funny. So, um, you know, you guys can have a little bit of fun with this because I, of course, I made these topics as crazy as I could to really get a reaction out of you. Brandon, yes, uh, uh, Susu. Interrupting, but um, yes. I must go to my school because we have a big dance. So um, can I leave this meeting? Yeah, and so Suzu, if you check the yellow, it will be, um, the homework will be focusing on the negation, negate, uh, to say no to a thing, right? And you'll yeah. use the... Yeah, and you'll be a, you'll do a great job. A one or two minute video like you did last time was wonderful. And then you just have to say, I don't think it's a good idea for students to come to school at 10 o'clock in the morning because it's too late or is it 11 o'clock in the morning, right? Yeah. Okay, good yeah. luck, Susu. Have a safe yeah. day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Say goodbye to Susu, everyone. <laughs> right? Are you guys ready for the breakout rooms? Okay, so yeah. we go to breakout rooms, and so we're going to just can... choose one. Okay. Yeah. Brendan, so did, uh, did you, yeah. Um, so how many minutes do we have for the breakout room? Well, you're going to have a really big size group, Chowka. So would you like to take like 20 or 30 minutes just to chat with the students and see what they think? Because I, after they finish this, I just have a fun activity, a game, a game for them to play. So if you want to, you know, just enjoy a good conversation and just keep reminding them that they should use the proper negation style. That's our main goal for today. Yeah. Teacher okay. Brandon? Yes? Can we talk for 20 minutes? Yeah, you know, right now in um, it's 2.42 in Vietnam. In Japan, it's 4.42 in the afternoon. Um, you can go all the way until, let's say, um, what would it be in Vietnam, 3.10? until 310. So that gives you a full 28 minutes if you want, Mary, because some of you guys really enjoy a good conversation. And our teachers, helper, um, Chowka and myself, we can always bring you back to the target language. It's no problem. And you guys have good manners. You never interrupt each other and speak over each other. So you, you, have, you already have really good speaking manners. It's a real pleasure to teach you guys. And I hope you guys take the course part two, which will start um, sometime in April. All right because you're doing a great job. We have some more exciting ideas for you. Okay, so thanks Mary for that nice question. Here we go into the breakout rooms. And um, so yeah, go all the way until, um, I'm trying to think of the time, 510 in Japan is 310. So you can go all the way to 310. Mr. Thomas, a question please. I've been raising my, I've been, I've been waiting you to uh, call on me to call on um, me. Uh, what? <laughs> answer answer my, question. my question for twenty five minutes. Know, this is now, terrible, and you've never seen, and you never see me. Just raise your hand. I okay. know, Thomas. I'm sorry. I thought so maybe. Basically. Yes. Um. How do I? Ten and ten. Ten oh. and ten. Um. <laughs> I didn't even see him. I'm trying to learn. I'm no, no. I don't see him looking at the screen. He's looking like to the, the right. I know. Do you know why? Because I'm always looking at my notes for chat, and I and I'm always looking at the breakout rooms, and I'm always looking to put what's next on the screen. So it's an excellent observation, Mr. Thomas. How come teacher never looks directly in the screen? But actually, Thomas, it's a secret. I'm afraid that some students are AI. And so if I look directly at them, I might become AI too, Thomas. 
<laughs> it's just that a joke. Happened. That happened. That's really a joke. It's a crazy joke. No, no, no. You don't believe it. All right, you guys. Are you ready? Breakout room time. I'll see you again at 4, 10, uh, 3, 10 or 3, 10. Okay. So enjoy close to 26 minutes of uh, chatting with your teacher. Okay, and I'm gonna move Anna to the main room. I have to keep some of you in the main room. So let's see, main session for Anna. Anna Lee, main session with me, please. Bao, main session with me. Uh, Yuring, that's a wonderful name, main session with me. Bing, main session with me because I want a chance to talk to you more. Oh no, Henry and, Harry and brother have become Spider-Man. <laughs> Very funny, Harry. Uh, I'm going to take Alice to the main room. Main session, please. Uh, I'll put the uh, Ms. Jenny in there. And let's go with Ken to the main room. Let's go with Kevin to the main room. These are such big classes, you guys. Uh, let's see. Henry, Henri to the main room, please. I'm going to bring Harry and his brother who are doing Spider-Man things. <laughs> Harry, good. All right, Harry, you're in my main room. Wonderful. Okay, let's see. I don't want to put all the students in Chao Ka's room because that's a lot of work, you guys. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And still, there are a lot of students in her room. I feel bad about that. Uh, let's go to Mr. Tom in Hanoi, and let's go to Tracy, and let's go to Win. Okay. So we'll add three more students. All right, how are you guys today? Talk to me. There were some students I didn't get a chance to talk to. So if you'd like to say hello. Harry, let me ask you a question. If you're there, you can turn on your microphone. Harry. Hey, Harry and brother, you know, those goggles you have on. Uh, this morning, I saw a student with those goggles and I honestly thought that they had the new Apple uh, goggles that cost $3,500. And he said, no, this is just CGI using Zoom. <laughs> so, Harry, do you know those goggles by Apple? I don't know. They're virtual reality. So you put the goggles on that look a lot like what you guys are wearing and you can play computer games with your goggles. It's kind of cool. You can like go into another world. PlayStation 5. Yeah, PlayStation 5 style. Very cool. All right, let's see. Who do we have? Um, Tracy and Tom. Let's ask for Tom in Hanoi. Hello, Tom. Yeah, hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. And how about you? Pretty good. I'm having a good day. Um, Tom, would you like to look at the screen and would you like to try to negate one of these um, statements, you know, the crazy statements? Anyone is okay. You can choose whichever you like. Mm, okay. Right. Which one do you think is strange and you would like to say, I don't think that's a good idea? Mm, I, I don't think the school, zoo in the school like that. <laughs> yeah. That one I thought of really quickly because I needed some negations. So, Tom, can you choose one of these? And you say, it is our position or contrary. Mm. Mm. So I'm the affirmative team. I think our team contends that it would be a great idea to have a full-size zoo in each school in Vietnam so that the children could play with big-sized tigers, lions, and bears. Mm. We disagree with the premise, but put forth forced by the affirmative team. We assert that each school have zoos is not really safe yes. and, and the animal can be dangerous. Yes. It can be smelling and if the animal mm, like poop outside it will be dirty and smelly. Yes. Nice work, Tom. Those are like five good points you could create into a whole debate. 
the animals smell bad, they're dangerous, but they're also dirty, like maybe the kids could get uh, sick from them. Tom, you know, mm-hmm. during the COVID epidemic four years ago, um, in New York, they did some tests on the tigers. Do you know the tigers actually got COVID virus in their noses? But the tiger's body so strong that the tigers just had runny noses, water coming out of their noses, but they never got really sick. Isn't that isn't that amazing how powerful COVID was? Mm, yes. Yeah. Mm. So that's why, you know, sometimes animals have diseases. We have to be careful. Nice work, Tom. Can I ask Mr. Wynn? He's doing the crazy eyes. Mr. Wynn, are you there? <laughs> Wynn, I love those eyes. How are you today? I'm fine. Wynn, I'm sorry I didn't call on you more the last few weeks because there are so many students. So I, I promise I'll try to call on more of you. Wynn, what do you think is a crazy idea in this list of things like zoo animals, oh. eat as much candy? Um. Uh, uh, what is the craziest? So thing? you can choose one. Which do you like? Which do you think is like really funny and strange? <laughs> I, I see all what's crazy. Which one is it? When? Which one is that? I see all what's crazy and strange. Okay. The three hours of video games a day? Or computer? No, 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 no. All of it. All of them? Yeah, but I need to choose a phone. So oh. I think the other thing was just the zoo. Wait, which one is it? When is it come to school at 11 a.m. or use motorcycles to go to school? I use motorcycles. Okay, here we go. So when I'm the affirmative team and I said, Um, Hello, everybody. Thank you for allowing the affirmative team this chance to present our opinion. Um, We of the affirmative team think it's a really good idea if young students should be given a motorcycle to drive to school each day because then they don't have to use the bus and their mom and dad doesn't have to drive them to school. Next, I will give it to Wynn to say, no, I don't think so. Ready, Wynn? Try to choose a red one here. Are you there? The negative team disagrees with this word. Nice. We contend? We contend that that that's to that to that riding a motorcycle is yeah. very dangerous for children from going to school. Nice work. In my country they in my country, there there are many. There is a lot of car accidents and motorcycle accidents too. Yeah, yeah, this is true. Win, good. Yes. All right, you did a great so job. I think was just very, very, very crazy. I know, but that's why I wanted to make crazy questions because I like to see you guys smile and laugh, and this makes these questions easy to negate. Henry, are you there? Henry, it looks like you want to help here. So, Henry, um, which of these choices do you like? Like, Or you could create your own crazy idea, Henry, if you want to. I think that I would choose the idea is uh, kids should eat as much candy as they like. Okay. By the example you gave for me. Okay, do you want this red one here? You can choose one of these to negate. Do you want me to negate or do you want to negate? Me. Okay, so um, Henry, I think children love candy so much and it gives them energy. So we on the uh, um, affirmative team strongly believe each child should be given a bag of candy in the morning to go to school with and eat it all day. Thank you to the affirmative team for the presenting the case. However, we must respectfully disagree because our team think that candy sometimes they are very bad and unhealthy for the children, so, but some candy is have some energy like the like you guys say that. So I think that the children need to eat less of the candy, and they need to brush the teeth too much, so the teeth will get clean. 
for the children so the children can be safe. And read. Nice work. That's the way to do it. You guys are learning this really fast. I'm really happy to see it. It's really good. Hey, Kim, would you like to try? Kim Tu, 12 years old from Hanoi. Kim, are you there? It's a great name, Kim Tu. T-U in Spanish means you. So it's like, hey, Kim Yu, 12 years old in Hanoi. Kim, are you there? Or to Kim. Hmm. How about Bao? Bao, are you there? Ms. Bao. Bao. Yeah. Hey, Bao. Yeah. How are you? Um, I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Would you like to choose one of these crazy ideas? Mm, I don't have any ideas yet. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right, let's go to Kevin. Kevin, are you there? I think Kevin would really like to try this. Yes. Hey, Kevin, do you want to use these or can you think of your own really strange idea for school age children? I uh, can use her again. Okay. And if you want, I could write it here, Kevin. I can put a new idea there if you tell me it. Oh, uh, yes. Um, children are uh, um, like can uh, learn any lesson <laughs> in uh, one day that, that they would like, they want. <laughs> All right, there you go. Hey, uh, Kevin, I changed it a little, but it's really good. The students can learn any lesson when they feel like it, uh, feel like it each day. So I'm going to put it here, when they feel like it each day. Do you know, Kevin, there's a school system from France called Montessori by this famous woman named Montessori. And this is about 120 years ago. And you know what, Kevin? The students can choose what they want to learn any day. But my friend Ian in Los Angeles said, I hate Montessori. He said, the kids act terrible. They have really bad behavior. So, Kevin, if you want to use that as the negative team, but of course you could use your own idea. So, Brendan says... Kevin, I think students can learn any lesson when they feel like it each day because the Montessori woman in France 120 years ago said that this creates a creative student who loves to learn. Go ahead, Kevin, you can negate it. Um, I am an affirmative team. Yeah, uh, well, you're negative, so you get to choose a red here. I am negative. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you to affirmative team for presenting the cast. Mm. Um, however, we must respectfully disagree. Our team feel that the uh, students uh, can learn uh, any lesson when they feel like it date. It's not well, a good idea. Okay, good. Yeah. Because, like, it is don't have a student uh, good old of them, oh. and uh, maybe some uh, other important lesson, but that they don't want mm. make them like they are. If they don't want any lesson, they will mm, don't good at it at them, but it's very. Not good for them because you know that in the future you must good out to have a good uh like good um good work yes mm. yeah all right Kevin and uh like when you do that you want to uh, you learn anything that you want it uh -huh. is like it uh you uh oh uh, yeah like it is when uh, we have test in the all of the lesson of the subject yeah. we only do good in the subject that I uh, uh mm. that we like to learn but the other we don't good and it is not a uh, like it is not very good for me uh, yes. Mm. 
<laughs> Here you go, Kevin. All right, Kevin, I kind of changed some of your words, but would you like to read this one more time? You can start here. Oh, uh, yes. Um, students mm -hmm. learn in any lesson when they feel like it. That is not a good idea because learning any lesson means they will not be good at all in subjects they don't like. In the future, you must demonstrate good work in important classes. If students learn anything they like, of course, the students will get good grades in the classes they like, but terrible grades in subjects they have no interest in. Do you think it's close to what you were saying, Kevin? Yes. Yeah, nice work. Very good. So that's a good negation. Exactly. You're welcome. How about Ken? Ken, are you there? I see Ken. Hello, Ken. Yes. Ken and Ted, how are you? Yes. Uh, fine. Ken, do you see um, Kevin made his own about students learning anything they like, which is really wonderful. Do you like yes. any, Do you like any of these, or you can create your own if you want to? Uh, I like it. You like the list? Okay, pick one, Ken. Um, uh, I don't know. I think I'll pick less students learning any. Okay. Now, would you, I'll tell you what, Ken, can you use one of these red parts here and I'll help you get started. So you can choose any of these. Um, uh, thank you, you two, Nathan. The first one? Everyone's picking the first one. Hey, Ken, if I help you with this word rebuttal, rebuttal, can you try this one with rebuttal? Allow us. Yes. Okay, try that yes. one, Ken. Yes. Okay. Can you read that one? Allow us to offer. Allow us to offer a rebuttal to the points raised by the affirmative team. Yeah, say so first we... First, we feel uniforms. Oh, not uniforms. We feel what? this. We feel this. Okay, read this part next, Ken. Uh, we, we, feel, we feel students learning any lesson when they feel like it each day is not a good idea because learning any lesson means they will not be good at, uh, at all in subjects they don't like. In the future, you must... Uh, demonstrate a uh, good work and important classes. If students learn anything they like, of course, the students will get good grades in the class uh, they like, the terrible grades in uh, subjects they have uh, no no in interest in. Interest. Yeah, nice work. Really good work on that, Ken. I'm happy with that. Really good. How about uh, Moon? You changed your name from Bao to Moon and your camera is on. Hello, Moon, how are you? I'm fine. Good, Moon, would you like to pick one like the candy, the motorcycles, the zoo, anything you like? I want to choose out of this. Okay, which one? I want to choose students shouldn't sleep after yeah. sleep after after days after they eat their dinner. Oh, so you want to make your own students should sleep? Should students shouldn't students shouldn't students shouldn't sleep? Sleep after yeah. After they eat their... Is it lunch? Dinner. You know, when they oh. go home. When they go home? When they go home after they eat dinner, they can't sleep. Oh. Stu so students should not sleep? Yes. Um. After they eat their... Dinner or snack? Dinner. Dinner, okay. So they should stay awake and do some homework or watch TV. What should they do, Moon? 
They should, they should not sleep before they finish. They should sleep before they finish the homework because when I don't finish my homework at at the school, when I go to school, my teacher shout shouts loudly at me. Why you don't? Why you don't do your homework? Oh, okay, so Moon, let's change that a little bit. So I'm gonna do this one. Students should not sleep after they eat their dinner because they should get their homework done before they go to bed. Okay. Yes. All right. All right, Moon. So if I negate that, Moon says that, I, I would say, okay, Moon, it, it is our position of the affirmative team's proposal overlooks crucial factors such as sometimes the students get sick and tired after school. So their mother gives them some medicine after dinner and they have to go to bed. So they should not go to school the next morning because the teacher will shout at them if they didn't do their homework, right? So that's how I would use that one moon with the blue, with the red writing right there. Okay. Good work, Moon. Let's go to Ellis. Ellis, are you there? Yes. Uh, Ellis, did you choose one of these already? There are so many students, I forget. Uh, I think I will choose that. Uh, kids should eat as much candy as they like. Okay. So I'm the affirmative team. I say, Ellis, kids really love candy. And when they eat candy, they're happy. So when they eat candy, they feel like it's a birthday party and they will be really happy in school. So therefore, I think students should eat candy all in the morning time at school. <laughs> okay. And then you can choose one of these, Ellis. Okay. Um... Thank you to the affirmative team to present the case. However, I must respectfully disagree that uh that stu when students eat candy they feel happy because candies can make them have a tooth edge and some of the students scare of dentists too too. And when they it much as much and candy as they like. They don't know when, when to stop, and maybe it will bad for it, their health. Yeah, they give you a stomach ache. That's really good. Nice work on that one. Okay, uh, let's see. May, would you like to try? You've been patiently waiting. May, which one would you like to choose? Uh, I would choose. Summer vacation should be from May 1st and to October 1st because it's too hot to go to school. Okay, I'm laughing because nobody chose that one and I really enjoyed writing that one because when I was in Taipei, Taiwan last year, I had to teach until August 1st and it was too hot and the students were so sleepy. So I'm going to say for junior high school and high school students, the students shouldn't have to go to school from May until October 1st um, because it's too hot. Maybe they could go to a special summer camp and still learn two subjects like science and math camp and really enjoy summer playing sports. All right, May. Uh, while we appreciate the affirmative team's perspective, we, we believe there are significant flaws in their affirmment. Uh, I think that uh, it's too hard is not a problem when we go to school because uh, when we go to school, we just learn in our class and also some some modern schools also have the, um, what? <laughs> what is it, man? Uh, a, a lot of fun and, yeah. also, and also, uh. And um, also, uh, every every class uh, has a lot of more modern that makes us feel cool. So, and also in a lot of uh, different countries, uh, about 
Uh, we also didn't go to, uh, don't go to school uh, in winter. So if we didn't go to school from May to uh, uh, um, October December, first, October, and then yeah. December, that's uh. we just go to school in five months. So I, uh, I just agree. Okay. Hey, wonderful. You did a great job of disagreeing. Very polite. Wonderful. Now, you guys, you guys say that's a crazy one, you guys. So um, this one, I'll explain to you guys. We have one. Oh, we should stop the breakout rooms. That's fine. But, you know, this one that I chose, that used to be the system in America about 140 years ago. America was mostly farms with small cities and the families needed the children to help on the farm with the animals and the corn and the rice and the wheat. So the children stopped going to school in May and they didn't have to go back until October 1st because they helped the family cut the food from September. And that was the system. And so they could only get about seven months of education. And so they, that changed when America's cities became really big and there were less farms. But let me um, explain that to everybody when we close the breakout rooms, because um, we're right at the thing at the at the 510. Right. So I hope teacher Chow An was able to discuss with everybody um, this. All right. I'm going to put this on English. Zoom always asks me, do you want to use English or Vietnamese? And I'm the teacher. I have to use English. They always ask me these crazy questions, you guys. Okay, so we'll wait for the other students to come back and then um, you guys will play a game. I created a game of riddles. And so let me write that. Um, I think you guys know riddles. So I'm gonna put this in chat. Hello, Jenny, how are you? Hey, Jenny, did you want a chance to negate something? If I say students should eat candy every day, what can you say? Um, I think is I disagree with that one. Mm -hmm. And, and I, saw that, I saw my topic too. All right. So can you give me one of those great videos that you and your brother make and send it to me for homework? And I'll show you the homework in Zalo for your mom and dad to see because they always support you guys. It's wonderful. Mary, you love, um, Jenny, you love pink. Everything is pink. Your curtains are pink. Your cabinets are pink. Your t-shirt is pink. Are you the queen of pink? No, I don't think so. Really? Because <laughs> I love pink bubble gum. So your pink room is making me want to chew bubble gum. And my doctor says, don't chew bubble gum. There's too yeah, much sugar. Yeah, now it's having a color pink because you know, they are very sunny. So I just making this one if I yeah. open it. Oh, you're right, Jenny. Yeah. Uh, Jenny, oh, that's incredible. I really have pink, uh, color yeah. pink, but I think I also like the color pink too. Because my mirrors, my table, my chairs, and maybe my bed are being a color pink too. Wonderful. Hey, Jenny, did you see the movie Barbie in this past summer? Barbie? No. What color was Barbie's car? Do you know? Oh, it's about the pink. I think so. Let's take a look at what Barbie's color's car was. And I think we can do this. And I think maybe you're going to want one of these. So you'll tell your mom and dad. There it is. Barbie had a pink car, Jenny. So I think you need a pink car. So what we'll start is we'll get you a Barbie car. But when you are 18 in Vietnam, then maybe you can get this real car. That's yeah. a great looking car. It's a Fiat made in Italy. <laughs> All right. But my car is half a color. It's black. Oh, you want black. Okay. Black is good. All right, you guys, are you ready? We'll play a game um, because you guys said, can we play more games, teacher? And that's fine, everybody. So the game that I chose, I have to be careful because last time I showed the students the answers and the students, they were, they were kind of these mischievous boys who said, teacher, I can see all the answers. And this was terrible, you guys. I felt really embarrassed that they could see the answers, right? Like how crazy is that if, um, Oh, wait one second. Okay, one moment, please. Are you still there? Okay, I have to put that down there and I have to find the answers. I'm going to save this. Sorry, I'm talking to myself, but I have to save some of this for your homework. 
and I have to find that riddle game. So American English, it was lesson number two. It was supplement, but I have to be careful because I took out the answers. So I'm gonna be, oh, oh my gosh, you guys, it still has the answers. Okay, I'm not gonna scroll down. I'm just gonna keep you here because you guys are a good team and you promise not to look at the answers, okay? So here we go. Me too. Hey, yes, Mary. I just changed my background into one like you. Oh, okay, you like the space background too? <laughs> it's it's yeah. kind of inspiring, Mary. It gives you an idea like space. All right, here you guys go. Now, if you could use the raise your hand because the riddle game gets students really excited and everyone shouts out the answers and I can't understand the answers, right? So let's play the riddle game. Number one, um, who would like to read? May, would you like to read the first question? Uh, number one, what yeah. are the next six letters in this? J F M A M J J. Yeah, what are the next two mystery letters? It's a sequence. By the way, this is a famous question on those IQs or intelligent tests that they've been giving students for the last 70 years. Some people like them because they make you feel like a genius. Some people hate them because they say if you get a low score, it makes the student or young person feel really bad. So this is a classic, like a famous question on these tests, you guys. I don't know the answer of the question one, but I know the answer of the question two. Okay, you read the question, May, for number two. Um, question two? Yeah. How many months have 28 days? Yeah, May, how many months have 28 days? 12 months. Every yeah. month have 28 days. Got it. Did you learn that one in school because you knew that answer so quickly? <laughs> No. Oh, you just knew that. Babe. English yeah. teachers love to give that question. Mm -hmm. My friend from New York gave that to the students in Saudi Arabia. And I said, oh, my God, that's a crazy one. <laughs> right. Henry, would you like to try that number one? No, but can I try number four? Okay, try number four, please. What is the next number? We have 25. It is 10. What is it? 10. Number and, 10. Yeah. Now, if someone wants to challenge this in class number one, Henry, the boys were all fighting. Is it 10 or is it five? Can you defend your answer like a good debate team member? Can you tell ten. us why it is 10? It's the correct answer, I think. But can you tell us why? Because uh, 25 minutes, the, the first two numbers, 25 minutes, 24 is equal one. Yeah. And I see that 24 minus 22 is equal two. Yeah. And then I know that each number is by minute y by one and then two and then three and then four and then five. There you go, you got it. Nice work and you described it well too. So just for students, they say, well, I still don't see it, but you guys are great math students, I think in Vietnam, 24 yeah. minus two. Yeah. Can who I is try that? number three? Yeah, who is that, Mary? Was that Mary or was that Susan? Let's see, um, the number three. Oh, now this is a challenging one, so please try it. And if you can't get it, I'll go to Susan next, I promise, okay? So is it Mary? It's the, 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 the name of the tree is Palm. palm. Oh, nice palm. work. Palm. Yeah, if you look behind Susan, she has a palm tree, but this is my palm is inside your hand too. So you got that one. Susan, were you going to guess the palm tree? Teacher, yeah. I know number one. All right. Number one. All right. Susan, would you like to try number five because you rose your hand? I want to try number five. Um, yeah, but you have to read the question. Here we I go. haven't thought of that yet, but uh, I know number six. Oh my gosh, you went to six. Okay, what is number six? I'll show you the picture. I think it's the keyboard. Yeah, what kind of keyboard? Like the normal, the the normal computer keyboard. Oh, they no, have keys, but they can't open locks. I think so. Yeah. So did you know when we did class number one, we found two answers, Susan, with the computer keyboard and I'm playing Chopin, Beethoven. 
Oh, the piano keys. Yeah, so you have two keyboards. You have piano keyboard and you have computer keyboard. And both of them are okay, Susan. Both of those are great answers. Yes. But how about number five? Alice, would you like to try number five? I like to try number one. Oh, back to number one. Okay, try again. Uh, I think the sixth letter is going to be A and yes, then A. S. Yeah. Because this is January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and then December. It's the name of the month. Nice work. Yay, Alice, you got it. Nice work. I forgot that I didn't give the answer to one, so thank you for going back, Alice. That's really good. Hey, where's Harry, the boy genius, if you don't mind if I call you that? Hey, Harry, uh, Thomas, Thomas, Mr. Thomas, are you there? Are you with us? Yeah, I'm, the, I'm here. Thomas, what do you think of this number five? Can you read this for us, please? I'm, I'm full of holes, but I can still hold water. What then am I? Yeah, what is that, you guys? You can raise your hand. I'll call on you. A sponge. Oh, you got it. Nice work. See, I told you you're super intelligent. And I, and I have the answer for question three, too. Okay, what was number three? What kind of tree can you carry in your hand? Yeah. I have it right here. Okay. <laughs> Teacher. Well, you guys, we already answered this question. So it's cute that Thomas wants to answer it again. The seed yes. What is that? Is that really? Is that a palm tree? No, it's not palm. It's a type of small plant. And it, ha it looks like a hand? There are different types of it. Oh, that's pretty okay. cool, actually. Okay, yeah, Thomas, we'll accept that as an answer. We'll this call it... giant one. Oh, my gosh, it's going to get giant. So you have to put it outside, Thomas. Oh, my gosh, one of the leaves just falls out. All right. Hey, can we go? Um, okay. Let's get one to Ryan. Hey, Ryan, would you like to try one? Yes, one. Yes. <laughs> Thomas, you're mischievous. <laughs> So, Ryan, how about number seven? Can you read it? I don't want to scroll down because there are some answers there. I have to be careful. Teacher Brandon? Yeah. I can answer uh, question seven. All right. So, Ryan, it says, what has a face and hands but cannot smile? Do you know that one, Ryan? It's a famous riddle. Um... It's me. You have to keep it secret. Very. <laughs> we'll keep the secret just so Ryan gets a chance, right? Let's see if Ryan can get a chance. Ryan, do you want a hint? Tick, 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 boop. A clock. Yeah, he got it. Mary, he got it. <laughs> Mary, he got it. He got it. It's a clock. The face of the clock. So if I have my digital clock, this is the face of the clock. And then it also has hands on an old style clock. So yeah, Ryan, nice work. All right, Mary. I went to Ryan, so I'll let you answer number eight. But you have to, oh, I'm sorry. Let Mary, me see for a minute. All right. Let I am me see for a minute. I am tall when I am young and short when I am old. What am I? And this one's interesting. Susan knows. Henry knows. <laughs> me. Shall we go? I have the answer. All right. What it's is it? A heel. It's, it's a, a heel on a mountain. A heel like a heel on a, a, heel on a mountain. Shirt. Oh, that's interesting. A mountain. That's actually it's really good. Cool. Let's go to Win. Hey, Win. What do you think? I see Win really wants to answer this one. Hey, Win. How about? I think of a person. Oh, a, a what? A pay a person. A person. Okay, that could be a person. Mary's yeah, mountain. I know number nine. All right, wait, wait, let's go to Susan. Susan, can you guess this one? I think Harry it's a also. pencil. A pencil's pretty good, too. That's actually good. You guys are good answers. We have a person. Teacher, a I know number object. nine. All right, let's go to Henry. Henry, can you get number eight? Like Susan, too, I guess it's a pencil. A pencil, yeah. Harry says it's a candle. Yeah, it's a candle. You got it. It's a candle. So the... The book says it's a candle, but mountain, pencil, and human being are all really good answers, you guys. So thank you for those good answers. How about the number nine? I know number nine. All right, who is that? Is that Harry? I know. 
All right, Harry, give it a try. Harry, uh, go ahead, read it. I think it is a t-shirt. A teacher? A t-shirt. Oh, a t-shirt has a neck, but no. Oh, that's actually a really good answer, Harry. Teacher, so I know one. That, all right, who is that? Anna Lee? Mm -hmm. Okay, Anna Lee, what is the answer? Anna Lee, upside I think down. It's a bottle. Oh, it's wonderful. It's a bottle. It's a bottle. Nice work. It's a bottle. Okay, the last question, kind of challenging. Um, I want Anna Lee. Who can read that one? Henry, read the uh, question number 10. I have cities, but no houses. Forests, but no trees. And rivers, but no water. What am I? Susan, what am I? I think that it's a map. Oh, you got it. Map. Susan's very good today, you guys. Let's take a look at that oh. map. There's the palm of the hand, you guys. There's the sponge that Thomas got. There's the hands of a clock that Ryan got. There's the candle that um, somebody got. There's the bottle. That was really good. And there's the map, you guys. I see rivers. I see forests, but no trees because it's hard to show trees on a map. This one was really interesting because someone said, well, trees are made of paper. <laughs> so that's why it's a map. And I thought that was a really interesting answer. Okay, you guys, we have five minutes left. So before I tell you the homework one more time, I just wanted to show you um, that Vietnam is here, Cambodia is here, Thailand is here, and Laos is here. And this is an elephant in Thailand. So remember I asked you the question about the dangerous animals in the zoo. And so I'm gonna ask um, Henry, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Henry, do you think that riding an elephant is dangerous? No, I think it's riding the elephant is, I think, quite fun and quite easy too because elephant is the huge animal, but it's very friendly with the people. Yeah. So now, Henry, do you live in Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City or Da Nang or Hue? I live in Ho Chi Minh City. Okay, so if you fly Ho Chi Minh to Bangkok by airplane, how many hours is it? I think I just get that. It's over three hours. Yeah, it's really good. Two to three hours. Now, if you change planes and you go to this wonderful city, Chiang Mai, then it takes about two more hours. So you could get here by airplanes four hours in the airplane, but then you have to go to the airport, and that takes a long time. Yeah. But, uh, Henry, really? you're interested in that. Yeah. Do you guys do you want to see what Chiang Mai looks like? So I hope you can go to Chiang Mai with your family sometime. Has anybody been to Chiang Mai in Thailand? I'm going to show you Chiang Mai. This is a beautiful. This is a beautiful city. But in Vietnam, of course, you have beautiful cities too. Um, so Chiang Mai, Thailand, and get ready because this would be like a magical trip to Thailand that you would take. And here we go. The students really like this in class number one. So do you see this? I mean, doesn't this look like Barbie Land? Like <laughs> it's just so colorful and beautiful. That's um, almost nighttime, those beautiful it's colors. It's like Japan. I know, it looks a little like Japan. The food is really delicious. Do you know some of these temples have real gold? That's like real gold, you guys? Yeah. yeah. Are you liking Barbie? Yeah, <laughs> I think you like Barbie. <laughs> That's cute, Jenny. Look at this, I really looks like- I feel very and very really like, like you are the fans of Barbies because all the time you are saying that work. You know, this looks like candy almost, doesn't it, you guys? It looks like a castle. I know, isn't it crazy? It looks like a castle. It just so and beautiful. it looks like and it looks like a temple or a some kind of like church or something. Yeah. Jen, would you like I to go in with your family? I it looks like an ice cream like cone. Yeah. I, I think it looks like a like a pen. Look, there are dragons made of gold outside. Looks like a magic place. I just want to go there and eat lots of food because I love Thai green coconut milk curry. Look at this one's all white, you guys. This is a really strange place. Look at this one. It's, it's, uh, it's the red, it's the white building. It's, uh, like snow. Mr. Wynn. Mr. Wynn. I, I, mean, I, I think that you very like eating food. I do. 
But the doctor put me on medicine and he said, don't eat so much food, Brendan, because I used to eat too many sweets, too much pizza, too much spaghetti. And my wife in Japan, Makiko, said, no more. You're going to eat you're going to eat fish and chicken and beans and vegetables, you guys. So I <laughs> love Brendan. <laughs> what? Teacher Brendan, where's yes, the please. homework? Yeah, this is a good question, Mary, because it's almost time to go. So. Um, let's go to the homework and to show you the homework. Um, do you see the chat here when we did the affirmative team states that we have these uh, crazy ideas? Do you remember these crazy ideas that I did um, in the first part of class? Yeah. Um, Can eating you? candy and cake. So putting a zoo next to your school, right? Choose one of those topics and then give a one or two minute video where you say, we on the negative team disagree that a zoo for the children to play with animals at school is a really bad idea because the animals are dangerous, right? So can I'm going to- uh, Can you copy this to yes. the yellow? Absolutely, Mary. I'm going to put in the yellow the PDF for today's lesson. And then you guys just have to follow the directions. I'll write them in yellow, and you should be okay. To Teacher Brendan. Yeah. Teacher Brendan. Yes, Henry. My school is next to the zoo. It is next to the zoo. All right, be careful. Sometimes the animals get out of the zoo and they're dangerous, right? Teacher Brendan. Yes, Mr. Ryan. Do I have to do the same topic and as before? No, you can choose one that's like a little bit crazy. Uh, Ryan, you could say like the, the boys and girls riding motorcycles to school is really funny. But how about something like, oh, I think you should put an amusement mm -hmm. park in each school so the kids can go on the jet coaster or roller coaster every day. Right? Mm -hmm. So make it fun, you guys. It should be fun. But then you have to say, our team thinks this is not a good idea. <laughs> Because Ryan, like after the jet coaster or the roller coaster, the kids throw up, and every day in school they throw up their lunch, right? Brandon. Teacher, how about can I make a topic? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you can, Ryan. You make the topic, okay? But then negate the topic. Say, I think this is a bad idea. Can I say thank you to teacher's assistant, Chow Ka? Thank you for working with the students for 25 full minutes. It's really wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, do you, did they have some nice um, ideas yeah, in your chat? Yeah. Brandon. Thomas. <laughs> um, can you can you make a note? My school is next to another school. <laughs> do you think it's that's a bad idea? Two, it's next to two schools. Uh, okay, and do you like these other two schools? Teacher Brendan. Yes, when? You know what? I what? learned in two schools. In two schools. Thomas, I was going to make a joke. Are you ready for my joke, Thomas? <laughs> yes. So, Thomas, are you ready? In just I, yes. Okay, Thomas, here's something you could say. I think it's a really bad idea to put a school for young monkeys next to my school. <laughs> Because the young monkeys will jump over the fence and steal our lunches. <laughs> what do you think? That's funny. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I'll tell you guys a story in Zalo, in Yalo, why that's actually kind of a true story where I live in Japan. There's a famous island called Miyajima Island, and monkeys really do take the students box lunch with sushi and hamburger and rice. The monkeys used to steal the students' lunches. So the Japanese government took all the monkeys, like 50 monkeys, and they put them <laughs> in cages and they took them to the mountains to stay away from the island. So it's kind of a true story. And those mon monkeys, um, Ryan, those monkeys are in Nagano now, in the mountains in Nagano. No more Miyajima Island in Hiroshima. Because my friend Jun Kitamura was actually bitten by a monkey. And there were 350 students. And he said, why did the monkey bite me? There were 350 students and the monkey chose me. And Jun was really funny when he used to tell that story. But it's kind of a funny story. All right.
All right, you guys, can I say goodbye? And I promise I'll put the homework in the download, okay? Okay. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.